hello and welcome back to our Melee AI tutorial series. This is episode 4 and in this episode we'll be covering or starting to cover the ability for the enemy to melee attack us. So previously we managed to do their basic run up to you and circle around you randomly. Um, and, but what's missing from this is obviously their attack on you. So their attack um, is going to be based on animation and with that in mind uh, we're going to focus on this episode getting the animation set up and getting them actually attacking and then we'll go through the AI part of it in the next episode. So let's look at what we've got working with here. So I'm using the Paragon assets, uh, in this case Chimera for my bad guy, or Ch Ch yeah, Chimera, I guess that's how you pronounce it. Um, and that comes with a lot of animations. So I can go in here and I can find all the animations that Epic have made for this character. Now, obviously there's loads of different melee attacks you can do and like combos and stuff like that. I'm going to keep it dead simple for the basics of this tutorial. This is a basic tutorial, we're not going into really advanced stuff. Um, but you can combine this with um, normal melee attack stuff if you wish to do different patterns of melee attacks or whatever you want to do. But we're going to focus just on a simple melee attack. So the one we're looking at today is this melee A montage, this one here. Okay, so he's going to do that one and then return to his um, normal uh, place. So with that in mind, we can start working with this animation to get attached to this character here. Now, because it's really a montage, uh, it means we can use it as part of our animation blueprint. If you have, an, uh, have your own attack animation that isn't a montage, you need to first of all make it a montage. And you do that by right-clicking on the animation and going create an anim montage. Now, this is important because it allows us to interrupt, essentially, the current animation blueprint with this new montage and insert it into the uh, the, the skeleton's animation um, blueprint. So, um, let's go back to our enemy uh, blueprint. Animation blueprint, that is. Okay, so we've got a state machine set up. And we've got it currently set up in this sort of fashion here, where we have the state machine going into a cache, and then we're using the cache combined with this blend per bone uh, with this slot upper body. Now, this slot upper body is what's going to handle the montage interception. So we want to make sure that our montage is assigned to the upper body slot. So let's make sure that is the case. Let's go into our animation. And let's find it. Uh, melee a montage and to make sure it's in the right slot you can see in a drop down here it's a default group dot upper body and as you see this comes with loads of other slots that epic have made for these characters we're just looking at upper body so that's already done for us if you haven't got a slot you need to make a new one you can go to anim slot manager and click on add new slot so when i tell it to play that montage it's going to override Essentially, here it's going to override the animation of the play of this character and replace it with the new montage, which is the attack animation. So, what we need to do now is tell it when to uh, play that montage. So, let's go onto our enemy um, character here. So, we're looking at enemy's uh, blueprint. So, this is the character, the mesh's blueprint. Now, this is going to be different from the controller. The controller is going to be handling the in, essentially the inputs, and the mesh is handling the outputs. And the output for this is going to be the attack. So, let's create a custom um, event in here called um, attack. Okay. And what we're going to do is drag the mesh out from the component list, and then from there, we can tell it to play a montage and we hook that up and tell it to play the melee attack a montage. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to leave the play rate at 1, start position at 0, leave all that the same. And that will do just fine. So whenever I call this custom event on the pawn, which is this, what this is, um, it's going to play the montage. So now we have to make that call um, being made. So an enemy AI here, which is the AI controller, and so this this is like the inputs, okay? So it's like the, uh, the thing that's controlling that pawn. So what we're going to do in here is a simple uh, simple thing, uh, just to test that animation's working. So on begin play here, we're going to set up a timer. And this is all temporary well, until we get the AI hooked in. We just want to make sure the attack animation is working. So I'm going to set timer by event, 
and we're going to do a custom event here and it's going to be um, attack um, uh, let's do uh, pawn underscore attack there we go and we'll say every uh, four seconds looping we can do the pawn attack to call that event now I've got get uh, pawn and you get controlled pawn and from here we need to cast to the, the specific pawn reference um, what is a good way to do this rather than doing a cast every single time you call this event we can just do it once right at the start of the game and store that reference so on begin play right at the start here I'm just going to get my controlled pawn cast that to the melee enemy and I'm going to store that reference there that's coming out of here as a variable that saves me from doing that cast multiple times in the game. Cast can be quite expensive, especially when being done quite a lot. Um, so this would be enemy pawn. Now, if you've got loads of different enemies using the same AI controller, which you can do, um, you want to make sure you're casting to the parent enemy class, and then the children will all have that, share the same functions. Um, we'll plug that in like so. So on pawn attack, we can just use the enemy pawn reference that we just done. And then we can call that attack function, which then should trigger that play montage. So compile that and let's test this out. So again, this should happen every four seconds. There you go. So four. There you go. So what we're seeing here is that he's still doing his movement. Um, as if he's like just hovering around you, he's not actually going to attack you. So what we need to uh, work on next is getting him to move towards you whilst attacking you, um, and then resetting back to his last known position. Um, or you can stay in his own position. It depends what game you're trying to replicate. Some games do the return back to their own old position. Some stay their new position. Uh, position. Totally up to you. Um, so we'll be doing that in the next episode where we take on the AI part of this. Uh, so if you want to watch that next episode right now, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where a donation of just $1 will get access to that part, uh, plus many, many other videos as well before anyone else. A uh, big thank you to all my patrons for their continued support. None of this would be possible without you guys, so thank you again for your, uh, uh, as I say, your continued support. If you like what I do and yet to uh, have subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like this video. And if you have any suggestions or questions about content or future content you want to see, leave a comment below. I'll be interested to see what you guys want to see. Thank you all, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.